Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. In the last episode we got started with working on our building menu and in this episode we're going to make it so when we click on those cards we start spawning a building into our scene. So the way we need to do this first of all is take a look at our buildings. So when we spawn a building in, we want to spawn it in with our green placement material that we made in the last episode. Um, and we will be changing that material on the fly, whether or not we can actually place the building. So first of all, we need to get spawning in. Now, at the moment, this building mesh comes with a, a, a ton of materials associated to it. And these actually change based on what building we've got selected. So what we're going to do is on the event graph here, we go to begin play. And on begin play, we're going to take that building mesh out and we're going to store all of its materials in a uh, variable. So we're going to come from there and get materials and it will give us an array which we're going to promote to a variable. And this is going to be called mesh materials. So in here, we're going to plug that up and then we're going to swap all those materials out for our green placement material. So again, drag out your building mesh and we're going to set material and we're going to change the set material to our green placement one. Now the green placement material is only going to work on this element index that we set here. So by default, it only does it to the first one. Now our building mesh has multiple indexes. It has zero and one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this array to count how many times we need to do this. So for this, I'm going to make this a function. So let's just highlight this and collapse up to function. And we're going to do this one as set green placement. Inside of here, we're going to just disconnect that for now. And instead, we're going to drag out our uh, mesh materials array, choose get, and then do a for loop. Uh, based on the amount that we have here. So we're going to get last index. I'll actually just type in last index. There we go. And the last index will go into the for loop. Like so. And that means it will go through as many times as we have as materials. So this will work no matter what mesh we put on it. Even if it has one material or whether it has 50. So on this loop body, we're going to drag that to our set material and the element index is going to be the same index that's associated with our for loop. So hook that up like so. Hit compile and then save that. So this will happen on the event graphs begin play. So let's hook that up to our begin play and hit compile. Now to test this out, if I go back to here, this building when we push play should turn green. So hit play. And there you have it as that green placement material. So that's how that is going to work. Then we need to make another function which turns it back to its original uh, mesh materials. So back on our unit building base, we're going to go into making another function. And we're going to do uh, rename this one to set mesh materials. And as part of that, we're going to drag out our mesh materials array. Get that. Drag out our building mesh. And with the mesh materials, we're going to do a for each loop. And with the building mesh, you can do set material. And set material is going to be plugged in to loop body with the array element going into material and the array index going to element index. Compile and save that. So now we have this extra function which can be called, which will set the material back to how it was in the beginning. So to demonstrate that, I'll go back to my event begin play, put a little delay in there for now, and I'll delay it by uh, four seconds, and then call that set mesh materials function. Hit compile and test that out, and we should see that working here. So it's green, and after four seconds, it will turn back to its original thing. It's excellent, that's exactly the sort of behavior we want. So. Let's go back to here and we'll remove our delay and set mesh materials there because we will set that up later on. Now, what we're going to do here is after we set green placement is we're going to go into that function and under completed, we're going to set a new variable. Now, the new variable is going to be a Boolean which is going to determine whether or not we are placing the building or uh, it is active. So we'll 
do a building called is active. And when it's completed setting the green placement, we're going to set is active here to false. Hit compile and save that. And then what will happen is when we place it, we set it to true, and then we can use that to determine whether or not the building is going to be functional. So hit save, and we're done here. Next, we're going to go into our set green placement and duplicate that and call it set red placement. And this can be exactly the same, except for the material is going to be done to the red placement instead. Again, that's the material we made in the last episode. Now for this one, we don't need to worry about the is active being false here, but we'll leave it in there anyway. It's totally okay to leave it there. It's not going to harm anyone, um, but that will do there. So we've got set green placement, set red placement, and now set mesh materials. So that is going to be happening at the start of here. We want to actually place this thing as well. So at the moment, this is just going to be spawned in and attached to our player's uh, mouse position. So to do that, we need to actually hit update its position to the mouse. So we're going to uh, go to a tick event. And on a tick event, we need to get the mouse position under cursor, but only if this is not active. So drag out it's active. Do not. And put that into a branch. So to only do this if is active is false. Um, so on, on the true branch here, we are going to make it change its position based on the mouse position on the world. So for that, we need to get the position underneath the mouse cursor. So we'll do mouse. Uh, I think it's actually cursor. If we type in cursor, we should find. Uh, no, it is mouse. Okay, we'll do mouse. We might need to get the player controller first. There you go. So from the player controller, you want to get hit result under cursor for by channel. And in here, we'll leave it as visible. And that's going to be um, going through there. I think that's correct yeah i think that's correct um let me double check that and go to our player character uh, controller um mm, 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 mm. uh yeah we just want to get visibility channel that's what we want so we go back and make sure that's set to visibility and that should get us the floor position in the world. So we're going to use the hit result here and return value. So return value, we'll do this as a branch. So don't get any weird errors for that. that connect to true. And we're going to take the hit result here and break this apart. Now, if we do have the mouse on the position on the viewport, we're going to get the location and set the location of our actor here to that position. So we're gonna go set actor location. And that go to true and put that into location there. Hit compile and save that one. So when I push play here, because this is set up and begin play, he should move the mouse. Now at the moment you can see it's spazzing out a little bit here. Um, this is because the mouse detection is hitting the building as well. So to fix that, we go into the building uh, base, click on the mesh, and let's make sure these are all set up correctly. So at the moment, this is set to block uh, visibility and camera and interactable. I'm going to set it to overlap or ignore visibility. Let's do ignore, compile. And let's check the capsule component whilst we're here. That should be, yep, ignoring visibility. Now let's see if that does the same effect. There you go. So that is now allowing us to place the building where the mouse is on the screen. Excellent. So now we need to click and then set that position. So we're going to do 
on actor clicked here and on actor clicked we need to check first of all before we do any of the menu stuff that we previously have uh we're going to set it up so that when actor is clicked and is active is false to place the building so let's just drag this out a little bit and get is active and put that into a branch and that'll go there with true going into the branch doing the rest of it however if it is not true we want to just place the building so for this i'm going to make another custom event here called place building and on the force here we just call that place building function so on this function we're going to set the mesh parameter materials function and we're going to change the is active to true hit compile and save that so again let's hit play and then left click oh and it fell through the floor so let's fix that so it fell through the floor because it has gravity on it and obviously buildings here we don't want to have gravity so we're going to go to the character movement component and we're going to change the gravity scale here from one to zero and we're also going to make it so that the mesh part the visible part to be a uh, make sure it's above the the grid here in other words it has to be halfway up the capsule component because the heart capsule component is split halfway between the two so let's move that up and you should see that now is more in line here um okay we're gonna hit compile and save that and let's see how that looks in game now so if i click it will now spawn in the world as intended if we click on it again we'll get our menu excellent so now we've got that placement working we want to make it so that when we click on these we can then spawn and place this in here so we're going to go into our ui for this as i go to ui base building ui go to ui card now the ui card is when we click on it it's going to change and send back hey i've been clicked on this is the building you want to build so i'm going to go to the graph here and we're going to create an event dispatcher and we'll call this one build command event dispatcher and the input for this is going to have one input and that's going to be a class reference of this building class here so this is going to be a unit base that we're going to pass into it so search for unit base and you want to use a class reference in there you want to name that as well building to spawn and hit compile on the button you want to do the on clicked event and when it's on clicked we want to call our build command function uh, event dispatcher sorry hit compile and save that okay next we're going to go to our build menu base menu ui on our base menu ui we need to tie these uh, cards to that event dispatcher now you can click on each one here and you find the event dispatcher down the bottom here but that will take you a lot of time if you've got a lot of cards here so instead we're going to make it a bit smarter and we're going to use this scroll box that these cards belong to so on the scroll box we're going to go here and name this one card menu and tick is variable then on the graph here we're going to go to the construct event and on the construct event we're going to drag our card menu reference out which is that reference to that scroll box we're going to get the children of that scroll box get all children for each child you're going to come out of here and do a for each loop connected to our construct and for each one you're going to cast to and you're going to cast to UI card. And then as UI card, you're going to bind event to build command. Drag the event down here and do custom event. And this is going to be build command received. Build command received. And this is going to come with our class here. So now what we can do here is we can then spawn actor from class, plug in our class reference here, spawn transform, we can just get the 
I don't know, we can get any sort of position here, it doesn't really matter. We can just do come out of here and do make transform. The reason why it doesn't matter too much is because it's going to immediately go towards where the mouse is, because that's what the code is set up to do on the begin play of that. Once it's done that, we're going to remove this whole menu from the parent. So remove from parent. Now basically close the menu. Hit compile and save that. And the last thing we need to do is go back to our UI card and tie our class reference into the build command there. Compile, save that, and we can finally test this out. So we get first of all to place our capital building. Click on here, and we choose a farm. Now I've got a farm. Click on here again, barracks. Here again, we've got church. And we'll place that there too. And there you go. And we'll eventually have these so we can click on and show a different menu, menu based on each one of these. Because they will each spawn different characters, different buildings and so forth. So if you want to watch more content on the RTS series, including how to customize each of these buildings and make them sort of build with a, a inventory so you can only build them if you've got enough materials, check out our next video over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can watch all my content well before anyone else over on, uh, over on there. Uh, from just one dollar a month thanks very much for watching if you haven't already subscribed hit that subscribe button and i'll see you all next time bye everyone